Hello and welcome. The state of West Bengal has not seen as many cases as states like Maharashtra, which are now pretty much uh, leading the race when it comes to the number of positive COVID cases. But it's nevertheless interesting because we have not really looked at what's been happening in eastern India where the cases are low and will also much emerge much faster from the lockdown, which now has been extended for two weeks. So let's, buy, uh, let's understand uh, uh, from the ground uh, what kind of cases are being uh, presented and uh, how are uh, hospitals and doctors responding at the front lines. Uh, to do that, I'm joined by Dr. Shoibal uh, Moitra, junk professor and senior consultant, Department of Allergy and Immunology at the Apollo Glen Eagles Hospital in uh, Kolkata. Dr. Moitra, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, the scenario right. over here, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so the scenario over here, what we are finding now, it's pretty like disturbing. Disturbing why I say, because now we are getting all sorts of cases. I Means it's not that uh, the typical symptoms that we knew initially, like the patient coming with a fever, cough, and influenza-like illness, they are most likely to be a COVID-19. It's not the case. Now we are finding the patients with protein manifestations. Like they may have a GI symptoms, they may have ENT symptoms, they may have any other symptoms pertaining to any other system, and they're coming to the hospital for the treatment. The thing is that now there are some, this group of patients in whom the manifestations are, or the symptoms, they are not the typical symptoms. So we need to have a very high index of suspicion. So now the thing is that now we cannot say, well, if these are the patients having only this set of symptoms, we'll, we'll think of COVID. Or if this patient has a travel history or a contact history, we'll think of them as a COVID. It's not the scenario like now. Right now, it's any patient with any symptoms coming to your hospital has to be a suspect until and unless proven otherwise. So that is the thing we have to follow. Right. Because until and unless we do that, we will be unnecessarily exposing us, the other healthcare workers, and everybody if we don't suspect them, then we don't um, take the adequate uh, protective measures which we need to take. So this is the thing. And uh, another thing is that, that what we are seeing that we are finding lots of asymptomatic carriers now. Those people who are perfectly fine, healthy, no, no symptoms, but when by contact tracing they are being tested, they are coming out to be positive. And they are remaining positive for a, for a considerable period of time, over two weeks, three weeks, even four, four weeks. So what happens is that when these asymptomatic carriers, what we say, they are going out, they are mixing with the, the family members, mixing with the other healthcare workers, mixing with the other people in the community, so they would be spreading the infection. Maybe they are not developing the symptom because of their immune system is handling in that way, but it's not necessary that the, each and every person's immune system right. is handled in the same way in that person is handling. So what happens is that in this, the vulnerable group, that is the elderly people, that is those who have other comorbidities like diabetics, and the chronic kidney disease, CKD patients, the cancer patients, okay, these are the vulnerable group, the children, very young, young children, okay, then the pregnant woman, so these are vulnerable group. So what happens is that they get the infection. And if this infection spreads like that and they get the infection in them, the mortality statistics, what we have right now, it is pretty high. And this is alarming in a, in a country like India. So that is what is the scenario, what is we are finding over here. Right. Apart uh, from uh, that, Dr. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dr. Maitre, so you mentioned that people are coming with uh, uh, GI or gastrointestinal uh, mm. conditions or uh, yes. problems. Now, how do you relate that to COVID? I mean, or is it that they these are people who have some kind of gastrointestinal problem and also have COVID? I... These are occurring both the ways. That is, the people having some GI ailment, they're getting the COVID. And their COVID, the virus is being shed in the stool. That is, we know now the stool carriages of the virus is there. And the virus goes into the GI tract. It, it, it infects the intestinal cells. We know, know that. So it is both ways. That is, the person who have a previous, uh, some GI comorbidities, they are getting the symptom. Or maybe the patient might not be having any GI symptoms, but the patient is getting the GI symptoms because of the COVID infection. Right. Now, and, if you look at the know, list of the fine. symptoms... Uh, we were, we were uh, assuming to some uh, to a large extent that uh, anyone who show the early signs are going to be a respiratory problem, 
and you use that to sort of maybe do a primary diagnosis. So you're saying that yes, yes. a patient who comes in it this be, uh, uh, in this case yes. may not have a respiratory problem at all, but have. only have a gastrointestinal problem and exactly. COVID. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So that is so that a makes very much tougher. Uh, yeah, that is much tougher. So that's why I've told you that each and every patient who comes to the hospital is a COVID until now is proven otherwise. If we take this stance right now, maybe we'd be able to uh, diagnose more and more of COVID patients. We have to keep a very, means the index of suspicion has to be very, very, very high. That is the most important thing because we do not know that uh, how they will manifest, what symptoms they will come up with. But now right. on each and every day, we are finding people with newer symptoms coming, which we haven't thought of before. So that is the important thing. Right. And and uh, I mean, I, I'm sure you're talking to your fellow uh, colleagues and doctors uh, across the country. Are you seeing any trends in uh, Kolkata or uh, West Bengal, which are different from uh, other places the, that no, you... No, no. No, as of uh, what uh, means uh, means talking with my other colleagues and fellows in other parts of the country, we are not finding any separate trend and in the manifestation as such what we are finding in Bengal or Kol Kolkata different from what is there in Delhi or maybe what is there in in Chennai, things like that. So this is all similar. Uh, the only thing where the Bengal was lacking, as I had said before, is that not enough testing was being done before. So we are not getting enough cases. So that was the one of the main, main issue. If you just look up the what is the testing rate in Maharashtra or in Kerala for that instance, and what is the testing rate in Bengal, it was much, much lower than those states. Okay, especially in Kerala and all. Now the Bengal is coming up. It is now the testing rates have increased. So that is a good thing. But and so now, uh, now, now we are finding more and more cases. But still, it has to go up. Uh, means there is still a long way to go. We need to do much more tests. Okay, till we right. know the exact situation in Bengal in totality. Right. So, and 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 as an immunologist, I mean, what's your sense? I mean, uh, how is it this likely to progress? Are are uh, I mean, first of all, also, do you feel the data is reflecting? what you're seeing in terms of uh, patients presenting themselves at the hospital and also as an immunologist, how do you feel this is going to progress or uh, what are the possible uh, paths along which it could progress? See, the immunologically speaking, COVID-19 is a very interesting disease. Okay. What we are finding mainly, because mainly in the patients who have gone into the severe disease, who have gone into the critical disease, they are what we are finding, the immune response of the body a, against this virus is totally in a chaotic manner. There we say the immune system is confused, okay? So it is just uh, the cells are producing all sorts of chemicals and cytokines, which we call sending them in the blood and giving all sorts of chaotic signals to various tissues. So ultimately what happens is that instead of uh, protecting the body from um, the virus, the body responds in a very aberrant fashion. So we get uh, something like a systemic uh, respiratory, a systemic inflammatory uh, symptoms, or we call it a cytokine uh, storm, storm, or we call yeah. it a cytokine release syndromes, and and all this leads to a uh, much more or uh, much more problem in the body rather than uh, doing good. They do more harm, and uh, these are the reasons why the patient goes towards uh, it becomes more critical. It goes to multi-organ failure and towards death and causes the causes the mortality. So there are some telltale signs. Now we have some some uh, some means parameters which we can check before, and we can prognosticate. Yes, this is the patient who is likely to go into that severe or critical stage. And these are the patients who are who are most most likely going to come out of that. But, and we have some immunological parameters which have come up on immunophenotyping is a very, very interesting tool. But, uh, uh, but the thing is that not much uh, hospitals have access to the immunophenotyping. We can do this a CD4 count, which is usually done for an HIV. Any patient with an HIV, mm -hmm. we do a CD4 count. And we say that a low, low CD4 count, it's a bad patient going into AIDS. Similarly, in this COVID-19 also, if the low CD4 count, it's bad. Patient is most likely going into a severe or critical well, critical COVID-19. The critical uh, means uh, outcome is not going to be good. Apart from that, there are other measure, measures also. So cytokine levels, have interleukin-6, we have interleukin-2, we have interleukin-17. Interleukin and these all 
cytokines, if they can be measured before, they usually show that which a patient is going into the bad phase. Apart from that, lymphocyte count, very, very important. The patients who are having a low lymphocyte count, they are, these patients are most likely not going to fare well. So these are the evidences, these are the parameters which can be checked before and they, they can give have an idea, though majority of the patient will come out of it, but there is a particular group of patients who will go into uh, the critical stage, go on, go into uh, the ventilator, no matter what we do. So even if we detect these patients early, we can we can take on those these steps so that these patients can be prevented or we can take extra care for this patient. This is very, very important. So there are various parameters and that is coming right. up. But there's a very interesting thing of the COVID-19 immunology of COVID-19. It's really, very interesting. Right. So uh, last question, Dr. Maitra. So uh, as we uh, emerge from a lockdown in many parts of the country, maybe not in uh, Mumbai where I am, uh, how, how is, uh, uh, I mean, what should, you, uh, what, should you, what should people do? What are you advising your patients? See, the, first of all, uh, we need to know that why we went into lockdown. Okay. That is one of the main, most important questions that we need to know. Because then we will come to know that when and how can we come out of the lockdown. Okay, we went into the, into the lockdown to reduce the virus transmission in the community, so that if people get themselves locked in their homes, they are not going out, they are not mixing with the other. So what happens is that this is a man to human to human transmission. So this human to human transmission is reduced. And if we can have a lockdown for a considerable period of time, it could be a 49 days, it could be a 21 days, or it could be anything depending upon the viral replication rate, which we know now. So then what happens is the viral transmission in the community goes down. And once it goes down, then what happens is that the virus won't be able to affect majority of the population in a commune community. And by that manner, we prevent and the virus attacking the vulnerable group. Right. Now, now, next thing is that then how and and when do we come out of the lockdown? So this, this means when we have gone into lockdown, it does not mean that the virus, after lockdown, virus goes away from the community. It doesn't happen like that. The virus is still in the community. We have only reduced what is called the transmission of the virus. So this lockdown period is to be utilized mainly for two reasons. One is the infrastructure building. We need to have more or ICU, more ventilator units so that more and more COVID patients can be taken who become very sick and need the hospital admission. That is one thing. And second thing is that we need to do as much testing as possible so that we are able to understand that how the virus is spreading in different parts of the country. It won't be same because now we know the virus transmission in various parts of the country is totally different. Even in city, it is different. Even in district, it is different. So this is the most important information which helps us in containing only those areas where there is an active viral transmission and allowing the lockdown to ease off in the other areas where the transmission rate is very, very low. So one thing is very important. Whenever when, whenever the government is giving that this is a red zone, this is an orange zone, this is a green zone, green zone is, is totally, it is safe. One need to know one important parameter. What was the testing, paying total amount of testing done in the green, green zone? If we find that the testing rate was very, very low in the green zone, that means the green zone that, that we have putting up, that green zone may not be right. So that is a false sense of, of like uh, like we are right. there, yeah. So that is that should not be there. So we need to know if the testing rate is quite high and it should right. be adequate in all the zones. Then the zoning is going to be perfect and that is going to reflect the true picture in the commun community. And by that right. way, the con containing those areas and the easing of the other areas where the transmission is decreasing, we can definitely bring this disease from epidemic to an endemic. Anyway, it's going to be an endemic. And many people say this hard immunity concept is there. There we have, though, though there are lots of debates into it. Uh, so I'm not going to into that. So, but this is how the way in which it should be. Otherwise, we are going to again fall into trap when the lockdown gets over. People will come out. They will mix. The virus will again start spreading, and lots of cases, again, surge of cases will be there. So that is right. It. 
Right. Let's and do, we let's hope that does not happen, and uh, the sacrifices that we are making uh, now and today will uh, bear fruit in some way. Thank you very much uh, for joining us, uh, Mr. Moitra from Kolkata, and uh, giving us an insight into the behavior of uh, coronavirus. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much.